Hey, I'm Sam. Welcome to Brickwall Pictures. Today I'm doing a Darren Aronofsky tier list. I've done tier lists for a whole bunch of other filmmakers, so check the description for a link to that playlist. Darren Aronofsky is uh, an important filmmaker to me because he's one of the uh, filmmakers whose work I found most inspirational when I was first getting into directing. Uh, two of his movies in particular mean a lot to me. Uh, yeah, let's just get started. We got Black Swan up first. A phenomenal film. Um, it's one of the horror films that really broke through to the like prestige audience. A lot of people who would typically like turn their noses up at a horror movie can get on board with Black Swan, which I think is why some people don't even want to call it a horror movie. They want to call it a psychological thriller, which yeah, it is a psychological thriller, but it's also, it's a fucking horror movie. I don't know. There's a lot of people who devalue horror. They want to act like horror stops being horror when it be reaches a certain level of cachet. And I think that's just... I think that's bullshit. I think that's doing a disservice to the whole horror genre. This is a horror movie, through and through. It is a psychological thriller too. It's also a psychological horror film. It, it is a pretty goddamn great one. I think it is Natalie Portman's best performance by far, at least out of everything I've seen her do. Uh, Mila Kunis is good too. Uh, Vincent Cassel, my man, I love seeing him in this movie. He is great. Um, he's just an actor I, I, I love all around. And uh, you know, I like seeing him in a, in a good role in an American movie. Black Swan's great. I love the, the body horror elements of it are excellent. I love the execution of the more psychological scares. Like there are scares, there are like horror moments in this movie that are moments you've seen in other films. But the way Aronofsky executes them is flawless. He elevates the type of scare it is by how he executes it. Like specifically talking about the uh, sort of doppelganger moments. There's a couple of moments where Nina, the main character, sees someone and they appear to like have her face for a split second, right? That's a scare you can find in like a dozen horror movies where you know you see a doppelganger yourself real quickly. The way Aronofsky executes it in this, where I'm specifically talking about that moment where she's going under the like scaffolding on the sidewalk, and it's like the camera's just shaky enough that like you question what you saw the way that she's questioning what she saw. It's really excellent directing on display. Uh, Black Swan is great. Uh, it's A or S for sure. I know a lot of people put it in S, and a lot of people put it in A. I'm genuinely not sure where I would put it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put it in S. Okay, next up, let's grab Pi. So uh, I mentioned earlier that there are two films of his that mean a lot to me. One of them is Pi. The other one is not Black Swan. Pi was, I found it just so incredibly inspirational um, when I was first, like, you know, directing my first tiny little short films. Pi meant so much to me on that level, and, and it still does. It's, I find it extremely inspirational how it was made for such a tiny budget, so gorilla and grungy, and yet so effective at what it's trying to do. Honestly, the story is kind of messy, some of the acting isn't great, but it creates such an atmosphere, and I love the, the high contrast black and white style. I think this is such a visually striking film, and it gets all the striking visuals from its bare bones budget. This was Aronofsky's first movie, and I mean, it does feel like a first movie, but in like the best way possible. What this movie means to me is, like, it, it, I have like an S tier attachment to it. The actual quality of the film, though, is, is much lower. I think most people would probably rank it in like C tier or lower. Honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised if some people put it in like E or D or even F, like it's extremely rough around the edges and it is messy on like a narrative level. For me, the atmosphere, the visuals, just like the, 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 the bare bones construction of it means so much. I think I wanna, I, in my heart it's an S tier. Do I lower it from an S to an A or all the way to a B? If we're talking like the straight up quality of the movie, it probably can't go higher than B, but like, it just feels like a disservice to that movie. Because it's so effective in so many ways. Oh, and the soundtrack is so great. This is a soundtrack that I listen to regularly. It's tough. I think I'd be furious with myself if I didn't put it in A. So I'm gonna put it in A. And in my heart, it's an S. Next to me, Requiem for a Dream, which is actually, that is the other one that means a lot to me. This is another like highly influential film for me as, a, uh, as an aspiring filmmaker back in the day. Um, and of course, this one's like a bona fide classic. Everyone loves Requiem for a Dream. It's, I, I hear a lot of people say it's the kind of movie you watch one time and never again, because it just like destroys you. I don't think so. I've, I've seen it a bunch of times, and I think it's great every single time. The performances are incredible. Uh, Marlon Wayans is another actor who, like, he gives a crazy good performance, just considering, like, if you look at the rest of his filmography, he's really good at this. Ellen Burstyn, though, is, like, just a heartbreaking, devastating performance. She is incredible in this. Um, 
This movie made me like a, a full-blown fan of hers. The direction is so like assured and immaculate. I love these psychological elements. There aren't, it's a little more watered down, but like, you know, that shot that's on the poster of the pier, the shot where the camera like descends from the rooftop real fast, the stuff with like the, um, the, the like the conga line stuff with her weight loss program and like the, the fridge with the, the, the mouth that opens up, all that stuff, I love it. Um, but also just like the, it's a great human drama. This was adapted from a novel set in the like uh, Coney Island area. It feels very lived in, the setting is really important to it. Um, it's just so dramatic and all of the drama is gripping. Um, it's an ensemble cast where every character has a really tight narrative arc, and they're all compelling. Oh, Jennifer Connelly, too. She's the other lead. I forgot to mention. She's great as well. Oh, I didn't even talk about um, Clint Mansell. I want to shout out his composer by name. Clint Mansell is a composer he always works with. He's a huge part of why Aronofsky's films are as effective as they are, on the Audible side, anyway. Um, Pi had a lot of pre-existing music on the soundtrack, but it also had some Clint Mansell score, which is great. And Clint Mansell scored... Requiem for a Dream with the Kronos Quartet, I think, in this instance. And then he scored uh, The Fountain, too. And so, you know, they, they've worked together throughout their careers. Um, great, great music. The the score to Requiem for a Dream is it's iconic at this point. Everyone, you hear that, you hear like one second of that soundtrack and you know what movie it is. It's S tier. At one point, like when I first watched it, I thought it was the best film ever made. <laughs> After going and, you know, exploring broader cinema, I no longer think it is the best film ever made. But... It's still up there. It's one of the best films ever made. I, I, I believe that. I, it is, it's incredible. Okay, next up is Noah. We're going to the polar opposite end of the spectrum here. Noah, I think, is a, is a big misstep. I don't get why he made this movie. The script is like, why are you doing this? Uh, there's nothing about Noah that works for me. Like, not a single thing in this movie works for me. E-tier. There are some good visuals. I can give it that. I don't remember the music. Maybe the music's fine. Yeah, I can't think of anything else. I, I, don't, like, I don't like Noah. Okay. The Wrestler. The Wrestler is a fantastic drama. It's a much more like restrained, simple, humanist kind of story than his other stuff. I mean, Requiem for a Dream is very humanist, but The Wrestler is a lot um, more smaller and personal. It's a it's a real character study on this one guy, this wrestler played by Mickey Rourke, giving the performance of his life. It's an incredible performance. Uh, and the way Aronofsky shoots this movie is just perfect. It's an outside-the-box choice that perfectly accompanies the story being told. Um, there's lots of shots where the camera is like right behind Mickey Rourke, and it's almost following him, like a, almost like a perpetual OTS, but kind of like not even OTS. We're like right behind his back, following him around, and it creates this sense of claustrophobia, but also the sense of personal attachment. It really tethers you to this person in this character drama. It's a great part. Um, I think it's A tier. Marissa Tomei is really good at it as well. Uh, okay, The Fountain. The Fountain's a divisive one. Some people really, really love The Fountain. Other people hate it. Um, I think most people kind of hated it when it first came out. It was very much derided upon release, and then over the years, people have gone back and rediscovered it. Um, I'm kind of torn on it myself. There are parts of it that I think are brilliant, um, like the score. I think the soundtrack, Clint Mansell's original score for The Fountain, is probably his best score. Uh, and it's, honestly, the score is better than the movie. I'll say that. Listen to the soundtrack. If you <laughs> Listen to the soundtrack to The Fountain. Pop it on the next time you're, you know, working on something. It's a fantastic movie score. The movie itself, though, it's very interesting. It does a lot of good stuff. It has great elements. It has some really thought-provoking themes and presents its ideas in an interesting way. But then there's also a lot of stuff that doesn't really work for me. Just to set up the narrative real quick, we're kind of seeing like a, uh, like a generational love story. There's like a modern day plot. There's a um, like an Aztec era plot way back with like, or like conquistadors or something. Or there's a futuristic sci-fi plot. And in each segment, it's like the same love story. And you can read a lot into that in kind of like a Cloud Atlas kind of way. This was before Cloud Atlas and kind of doing the same idea. So it's Hugh Jackman and Rachel Weisz in each of these segments. Actually, I think in the future one, she's not really in it because um, the character she was is now a tree, which is outside the box and interesting. I'm torn on the fountain because there are things I love about it, like, like the soundtrack and like some of its themes. I don't always like the execution of it. Like I had a hard time getting on board with the Conquistador segment. It just it didn't draw me in whatsoever. I was most attached to the characters in the present day segment, which I think makes sense. And then the future tree segment, initially I was just kind of thrown off by it. It was, that's a segment that I grew to enjoy and appreciate more upon reflection rather than actually like actively watching it. It's kind of a mixed bag. 
uh, I think if I were to rewatch it, because it's been a while since I saw it, I think if I were to rewatch it, I could see my rating fluctuating in either direction, to be perfectly honest. It's C or B. Um, I think I'm going to go B. I think it, it does more right than it does wrong, for sure. Well, eh, maybe it is C, though. Sorry, tough love to, to, to the fountain. Um, okay. And lastly, we have Mother, his most recent film at the time of release. Um, Mother was like really hated by a lot of people and I did not understand why. I thought it was phenomenal. I thought it was like the best encapsulation of nightmare logic I had seen in a long time. Reminded me a lot, this might be why I liked it so much, it reminded me a lot of Pi, his first film. It felt very much psychologically on the same level. And of course, um, you know, comparisons to Black Swan makes sense because they're both freaky in a way and they both have that psychological angle. I think it's, I think Mother's closer in line with Pi. Javier Bardem is great in it. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Jennifer Lawrence. Um, I think she is good in this, though. Um, it's probably the best performance I've seen from her. At the same time, I feel like there are a couple moments where ah, it's at like 90% of the way there, her performance. It's a great portrayal of anxiety, of like this introvert versus extrovert mentality. It's an excellent encapsulation of nightmare logic. Um, it's telling of like its biblical connections. I think our, honestly, there may be a little too on the nose. Um, it's like obvious, you know, I feel like Mother wants to be like a David Lynch movie where you have to like, it's all abstract and surreal and you have to like think about it and maybe you can interpret it or maybe just let it wash over you. But with Mother, I feel like everything's really obvious and really on the nose. There's not really a whole lot to read into it. And it, did, it didn't help that Aronofsky was, when he was doing his press tour, he was going around explaining the movie to all the interviewers. I think that's not the right approach. Should have taken some cues from David Lynch and just when they said, explain the movie and just say no. Believe it or not. Eraserhead is my most spiritual film. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why, we'll elaborate on that. No. I, I like Mother a whole lot. Uh, this movie, I think, is unfairly derided. I think it's great. I love that it really goes there. Like, it doesn't pull its punches when the crazy shit starts happening. Kristen Wiig's really good in it, by the way. She's an odd choice to pop in there for that character, but I think she's great in it. And I think uh, Donald Gleason. it's fun to see him always. Um, Ed Harris, always love seeing him, he's great. And then Michelle Pfeiffer is really good too. Um, the thing is, I think they all outshine Jennifer Lawrence. I think Mother's great, I think it's A tier. It doesn't quite rise to the S tier, but there we go. We have Black Swan and Requiem for a Dream and S tier. Yeah, that's my Darren Aronofsky tier list. Kind of a quick one, doesn't have as many movies as some of the other people I've covered, but uh, overall, very, very strong body of work. If you've never seen Pi, because I would guess that's probably his like least seen movie, because it's his first one, go check out Pi. You might really enjoy it if you're a fan of like, crazy freak out psychological movies that are really heavy on atmosphere, which is what that is. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Check out my other tier lists. Bye.